There is a Pegasus-like entity that is coming to Wuthering Waves, and it should be soon in the Black Shores chapter. And yes, this is based on official information, and it's way bigger than you think. If you have paid close attention to the Black Shores teaser, there are two frames that show horse legs and dragon horns on the same creature. Considering all the other images are relating to Chinese folklore, this creature is called a Longma, otherwise known as a Quilin, cue the Ganyu music, or a Kirin in Japanese. This is a mythological dragon horse that is noticeable from its dragon-like horns, horse body and winged feet. And yes, they can fly. This is not the only place we see the Longma though, there is also a hoof print on the shore in the trailer, so we are most likely to see this pretty soon in the game. The caption for the image translates to Weiji. After doing some extensive research, the only two meanings I could find for Weiji is Great Ambition and the name of a character in the Sovereign of the Three Realms. So my guess is that the name of this Longma is Weiji and the Three Realms have an adaptation in Wuthering Waves because the very next scene after we see the hoof print is three symbols with different backgrounds. Anyone knows another meaning for the name, please comment down below. And for interest sake, the name given to Ju is Shu Ju. If you research more into this beast, and all these sources are linked in the description, the Longma is from another dimension called Discordia, which became a dead world. This dimension is connected to Earth, which is in the Stellar Universe, and the Stellar Universe is part of the multiverse called Firmament. Firmament is the collection of timelines that are connected by the same cosmic energy and the adaption in Wuthering Waves also relates Mount Firmament with time. Inside the stellar universe exists the astral plane which in the source has a striking resemblance to what we know as Tether's Deep. The astral plane is a plane where the metaphysical exists separately not bound by the laws of physics. And this is the same definition Blackshaw has for Tethys, with gravity noted as being the only exception. So it is highly likely that Wuthering Waves is adapting from this collection of stories found in the creature world and the Lungma has knowledge beyond Solaris 3 and the Lament. The most interesting part is the Three Realms adaptation in Wuthering Waves. Generally, in any context, the Three Realms are a celestial or heavenly realm, a mortal realm and a netherworld realm. Which could mean in Wuthering Waves terms, this is the Tethys or the Elusive Realm, Solaris 3 and the realm we see during the opening of the game with this figure. So who is she? Again, the answer is in the creature world. One of the characters perfectly fit the description of the character at the start, and she goes by the name Ananka Kaida, also called Adrastia, Grim Reaper, Mother Time, or Necessitas. She is the primordial who can see all of time and the inevitable, inescapable grim future. Her job is to make sure that what is meant to happen always happens. This causes eternal sadness for her, knowing all the bad things to come. She doesn't naturally have a form, but she likes to present herself as a female human like avatar that is thin and ghostly pale, with glowing pale red eyes and long wavy silver grey hair. The same depiction of the person in the opening of Wuthering Waves. To overcome the depression and the only happiness Ananka ever experienced, she has a child. Although Wuthering Waves most likely has a different name for the character, we can be certain this is where the adaption is from. The character that Rover seems to be inspired from is Fimbiter, also known as the Seed of Life. This is a sapien from the world tree in the creature world that keeps the universe in balance and is millions of years old. In this story, they are characterized as genderless and this would allow Wuwa's adaptation to have both male and female Rover as the protagonist. The connection between Ananka and Rover could be a mother-child relationship where Ananka sends Rover to Solaris 3, a world of lament to ensure balance. If this is true, that would explain Camellia's reason for calling Rover the seed of fate. <laughs> And the reason that Rover is possibly the child of Ananka is because of the smile we see when Rover is awakened. I hope I've explained this well enough that it is easy to follow. There is a striking resemblance of these characters and what we have in Wuthering Waves. Let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you in the next video.